Hey guys, this is your girl Nikisha and you are watching another episode of At Home with Nikisha. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a homemade deodorant. So this is a really serious topic because out of all the beauty products, deodorant is the most dangerous thing that we can put on our bodies because as in my other videos I mentioned that what we put on our bodies absorbs into our skin and goes straight into our bloodstream. It's so serious that research shows that it contributes to Alzheimer's and to cancer, especially breast cancer. I actually had someone who follows me on Instagram reach out to me and ask me if I could do a homemade deodorant video because she went to the doctor recently and they found a lump right underneath her arm. That is super scary and can I keep it real with you guys? I haven't been, you know, rocking the crunchy granola natural underarm deodorant thing for the last couple of years. I've been really bad with it because especially in the summer, my underarms could smell like a bag of onions put out in the heat, okay? Like, and that's not cute where I'm reapplying deodorant twice a day when it's hot outside, especially now that I live in Austin, it's really serious. But after digging into this and that woman reaching out to me on Instagram, I, I got back into the research again. I mean, I, I knew for years that aluminum and parabens and all this stuff that's inside of store-bought you know, non all natural deodorants was horrible for you, but this just put it at the forefront of my mind again. And so I'm giving it a shot. And I've actually been using this deodorant for a few days and it's been awesome. Like no odor. I haven't really felt any wetness. And I know you guys are probably wondering if it stains your clothes. And actually because regular deodorant with all those chemicals is an antiperspirant and it blocks the sweat glands it blocks you from sweating which is horrible because that means the toxins in your body aren't being released they're like getting trapped underneath here and that's horrible especially for women um, who are more susceptible to things like breast cancer because it goes right to your breasts and that yellow stain that you get is like your your underarms like hacking up all that nastiness and toxins and when you're using all this natural stuff it actually you don't get that anymore and you get a slight moisture I'm not really getting like super sweat like trickle beads or anything like that I haven't had any problem with odor which is crazy because usually I'd have to use like sports strength sometimes in the summertime just to get some type of odor protection because it gets real serious and like I said that is not cute um, also what you probably want to know is the shelf life the shelf life is up to 10 months that's a long time especially for the little batch we're gonna make today it makes a great gift and it's fun to do and it's way cheaper. You're gonna save like over $100 on deodorant because it's way cheaper just to buy this stuff and make it yourself. And I, I honestly can't believe that after I've tried all natural deodorant from the stores that the homemade stuff works better because I was a little jaded from buying some of the all natural stuff at the stores. And my son was too because he used to use Toms and that stopped working on him once he kicked into the teenage phase, you know. So I have to get him back on it. I'm definitely gonna get my husband back um, onto all natural deodorants. I'll include all the links to all these products below the video and I'll include some links um, in the post and also below the video that will give you the cancer research and how horrible these store-bought um, non-all-natural deodorants are. Here is what you're going to need. Some glass, plastic, or tin containers with the lid. I'm using two glass amber jars for my deodorant. A small wooden stirrer to stir our ingredients and a small plastic spatula. One fourth cup organic virgin coconut oil. Kills fungi, yeast, and bacteria and moisturizes skin. 
1 4th cup of organic shea butter, raw and unrefined, protects and conditions skin. 1 tablespoon of magnesium oil. It's actually not an oil, so it won't leave your armpits oily. It's super low pH, keeps odors at bay, gives you a boost of magnesium, which we all need. You may experience tingling when applied to skin for a few minutes, which is normal and goes away after a few applications. One tablespoon of organic arrowroot powder. Absorbs excess moisture and thickens the deodorant. One tablespoon of tapioca flour, also known as tapioca starch, absorbs excess moisture and is a great substitute for cornstarch for people with skin allergies. One tablespoon of aluminum-free baking soda. Neutralizes odor and absorbs excess moisture. One tablespoon of wild-crafted candelia wax is a vegan wax option to thicken the deodorant. One drop of vitamin E oil is a super rich emollient and conditions the skin. 15 drops of tea tree oil. I definitely recommend using this essential oil and never omitting it when making your homemade deodorant because it'll definitely eliminate the armpit odor which a lot of the other oils don't do a good job of. It has antibacterial and antimicrobial properties that kill off bacteria, eliminating armpit odor, and heals the skin. 10 drops of 100% pure lavender essential oil has antibacterial properties that keep odor at bay, antiseptic qualities, and heals the skin. And five to 10 drops of clary sage essential oil has antibacterial properties that keep odor at bay, antiseptic qualities, and heals the skin. So you're gonna need to take a pot, fill it about a quarter away with water. We're gonna create you know, a double boiler like I've done in my other videos. You're going to need a glass bowl or a measuring cup, a glass measuring cup. And what you're gonna do is once that water starts boiling, you're going to set your glass bowl or measuring cup inside your pot with water to melt all your ingredients together. So here's what you have to put into the boiling water. We have candelier wax, which I'm gonna pour into there. I'm gonna use my little spatula to make sure I get every little bit of ingredient in there. Then we have the coconut oil that's going in there with the candelia wax. And the candelia wax is great for those of you who don't want to use beeswax because you're vegan or you might be allergic. Um, this is a great vegan option for wax. It could be used in lip glosses and lotions and stuff. Now we're going to add the shea butter. Like I said, every piece of ingredient is gonna go in there. Now, one drop of vitamin E oil. I'm using Jason's here. All right, that's one drop. And now, I'm going to bring this over to my boiling pot of water. You wanna make sure that the flame is on low heat. You definitely do not wanna do this on medium or high heat because you don't want to damage the nutrients or um, allow these oils to get grainy because if you heat them up, they are actually, actually susceptible to getting grainy. So we'll put this in the pot. Now that my oils and my butter and my candelia wax is all melted together nicely, I'm going to take my magnesium oil and add it. And I'm gonna give it a nice stir. You kinda of wanna stir it while you're adding the ingredients. Now I'm gonna add my aluminum-free baking soda. And 
and you want to use a fork or a whisk to mix this unless you have an, um, one of those uh, electric mixing sticks or an emulsifying blender which I don't have so I'm just gonna use my fork so that's all blended now I'm gonna add my tapioca starch also known as tapioca flour mix it all together and now I'm gonna add my arrowroot make sure it's all nicely blended together so what's gonna start happening is some of the starch and the flour will be like little tiny balls forming and kind of settling to the bottom and popping rising up to the top so don't worry about that you can still mix it together after you pour it into your container now we are going to add our essential oils. And like I said earlier, you definitely do not want to omit tea tree oil because I read a lot of reviews of people saying when they've used other essential oils and they've left out the tea tree oil that they start again, you know, like Funk Master Flex, real funky. So 10, no, 15 drops, one, two, All right, so 15 drops of that. And like I said, you can always adjust your, your recipe, whether you want it thicker. I wouldn't say you would want it any, any creamier though, but you might want it thicker or you might want to add more essential oils or less. Everyone's body is different. So now I'm going to add 10 drops of lavender oil. Stir that in really quickly. And clary sage. And the reason why I chose uh, clary sage and lavender oil, not only for the benefits and the antimicrobial action going on to keep odor at bay, but I love the smell that it makes all together. It has like a light, like you're frolicking in the forest smell and it's very unisex. So guys could use it and women can use it. And my friends like the smell. My husband likes the smell. So I'm gonna add five drops of clary sage. Actually, you know what? Let me add 10 drops because my last batch I added five. Let me see what it's gonna be like with 10. And I'm not a fan of the smell of tea tree oil, so mixing these oils together definitely masks the smell of the tea tree oil. And actually, I'm smelling it now, and it, it smells like strong green tea. That's exactly what it smells like. So I'm gonna keep mixing it, mix it really well. Then I'm gonna take my containers. Um, this made three fourths of a cup of deodorant. You definitely do not want to touch this hot bad boy without any gloves. So I'm gonna pour it into my container and whatever leftovers I have are going to go into this container. and you're going to let it set, I would say for a couple hours, a whole day overnight. I let mine set overnight and it's gonna get to a nice creamy consistency. Don't put it in the fridge because it's gonna get like really hard and, I mean, you could put it in the fridge, but then you're gonna kind of have to mess, chip at it, mess with it to get it melted down. And 
honestly, I advise getting these little plastic spatulas and there are actually some cream deodorant brands that I tried and they came with these. I love this. So I will show you, this is an already made deodorant that I did yesterday and it's set overnight. As you can see, it's a creamy consistency. You take your spatula, a clean spatula. You don't need a lot. You just take a little bit, I would say maybe a pea size amount and you just put it underneath your arms and it actually, after a couple of minutes, it all absorbs. So you're not gonna have like these weird greasy underarms. Another thing that's really important is you wanna give yourself a chance, your body, a chance to acclimate and get used to wearing all natural deodorant. So do not give up on it. If you know you're sweating more or you have odor, just give it a week, two weeks. Some people takes about a month and you can use chlorophyll, which is an awesome um, supplement, which is an internal deodorant. Like it's awesome. I recommend taking it in pill form or liquid form. Um, I'll leave it in the link below. It's wonderful for your body. It'll help you uh, prevent from giving off a stinky stank odor. Also, after about an hour, you should actually mix your deodorant cream because some of the starches and flowers are gonna like settle at the top and the bottom. So you're gonna see like little white dots. Don't be scared of that, that's normal. Just mix it up and it'll disappear and everything will be mixed well together. Some tips before you start using your all natural deodorant are you will experience a tingly sensation, especially if your body is in need of magnesium. And if you've just shaved, I don't recommend putting on natural deodorant because the magnesium and the essential oils will give it that extra tingling sensation. So either shave the night before, put it in your deodorant next morning, just give yourself a couple of hours. Do not put it directly on shaved underarms. Also, um, if it's still stinging you a little bit or you have that tingly sensation after about a week of using it, you can also put a little light coating of coconut oil on underneath your arms before you apply your natural deodorant and that will stop that tingling sensation altogether. And for extra protection of odor and Keeping your underarms dry, you could spritz your underarms with this wonderful magnesium oil. Spritz, spritz, let it dry a little bit before you add on your deodorant. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoy this DIY. And again, this is better than the store-bought all-natural deodorant. I'm really glad that I got around to finally making homemade deodorant because I was about to really give up on the natural deodorant part lifestyle because um, I'm not trying to walk around funky. I mean, who is? But pay attention to food you eat, how much water you're drinking, try the chlorophyll. Like I said, it's an, an internal deodorant that helps with odor. Don't forget to follow me on my personal Instagram at Nikisha Brunson and go over to pineapple.life, our website for more content. And I will see you guys next time.